Hello everyone, it is episode 14 of the chess.com rapid rating climb. I think we all know what's happening, and even if you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, it's glaringly obvious what this is. We're just playing chess, I'm explaining how I'm playing as I'm playing, and you guys go, huh, that's a really good move, or Alex, why on earth did you just play that? You're an idiot, why am I even watching your channel? And we have the Karakan, and our opponent goes bishop d3, we can go knight c6, we can go knight f6. I think I prefer knight f6 because it sets up the idea of bishop g4. But the problem with bishop g4 after c3 is the queen can just come out to a square like b3 or even c2. And I feel like we're just encouraging white to put their queen on a better square. And with our bishop wandering over on the king side, the light squares on the queen side are kind of weak. So whilst objectively... It might be the correct approach. I'm just going to play knight c6 and keep our bishop over on the queen side for now. And I'm very tempted just to play e6, which blocks the bishop in. But again, not every single piece of yours needs to be doing, you know, insane stuff. Now, while I'm considering e6, bishop d6 to try and trade off the dark squared bishops, I'd kind of like to keep my dark squared bishop. Because I'm going to be putting a lot of pawns on light squares. So I'm considering the move queen b6 to try and target b2 since his bishop's just left the defense of it. But queen b6, if the queen goes to c2, I think I like that. Because once we develop this bishop, well, this bishop could actually come out to g4 then. Because our queen would be controlling some important queen side squares. But our bishop develops, the rook comes to c8, and if the queen is on c2, we're setting up ideas like knight takes d4 and knight b4, because there'll be a pin. But if queen b6, queen b3, it's not quite as simple. I don't want to take him, because he's going to take like this, and his rook's going to get on the a-file. But if he takes me and I take back, our pawn structure is pretty ruined. Although we get the open A file, I don't want doubled isolated pawns. So, so I'm laboring this point a bit. But I think I'm just going to stay flexible with the move E6. I want to put my bishop on E7. Bishop D6 is perfectly fine. It might even be better than bishop E7. But for the sake of trying to win this game as well, because I'm not trying to draw, I want to win. I think the bishop on E7 not only keeps more pieces on the board, but like I said, because I'm putting a lot of pawns on light squares, I'd like to keep my dark squared bishop to try and control the weaker squares in my position. So, bishop e7. And I think I'm just going to castle. There's no weaknesses in the position. White could try a queenside expansion with moves like b4, a4, b4, a4, maybe like b5. I'm not really scared, so we're just going to castle. Maybe we throw the knight forward at some point. Not right now, because we'd lose a pawn. e5 is sometimes a move to try and break out, but white has so much control over the e5 square, I don't even want to attempt to do that. So I think it makes sense for us to try and focus on the queen side with moves like queen b6. But again, I don't like queen b3 because I don't want to take him and open the a-file. And I don't want him to take me because I get a ruined pawn structure. So, 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 so. Bishop c d7 looks fine to me. We could go b6 and bishop b7. But I think I prefer it on this diagonal. Also controls e6, which could be useful because a lot of the time in the Karo... And in the French, the Cairo and the French are very similar in a lot of cases. The e6 pawn can become a spot for trying to sacrifice material for white to get a crushing attack. So keeping the bishop on d7 just maintains some extra control of the potentially weak square. So, again, queen b6 is the natural move to want to make. But queen b3... Again, same problem. Same problem. And maybe I should have gone bishop d6 immediately. 
definitely queen on c7, but uh, whatever, whatever. We don't have to be perfect. What we could do is play something like knight here looking at c4, but we don't currently have enough control. So I would like to play a6, b5, and then knight a5, and then knight into c4. But the problem is, if I go a6, white can go a4 to control the b5 square. Now, can we use that to our advantage, though? Because if he goes a4, queen b6, queen b3 isn't as effective because he can't take back with the a pawn. He can still go queen b3 because the knight controls it. But I'm a bit worried about b4 in that position. Although that massively weakens c3. So then we can bring a rook to the c file and kind of bait white out. So I think that's the plan. I'm going to try and bait him into queenside expansion to try and weaken the c3 pawn and potentially force it to move to c4 to trade it off and give him an isolated pawn on d4. That's my plan. This is, I, I would say, fairly high-level thinking. I'm not necessarily correct, but these are the kinds of like positional ideas that you want to start coming up with as you start to increase in rating, because there is no immediate knockout. You know, I I can't just throw pieces at his king side like we did in the previous episode, linked below by the way, banging episode, also in the Cairo Khan. But you know. You need to try and work with minute advantages. So I like queen b6. And if he doesn't do anything on the queen side, we could go knight a5. The move a5 isn't playable because we just take it. So, and then the knight's going to come into a square like uh, c4 anyway. Next move, we're probably going to want to bring a rook to c8, potentially. It's a candidate, depending on what white does. B4 does restrict the knight's access to a5, but the thing is, the knight can just sit there, and if white ever plays b5, then the knight can go to a5, and if he takes us, that's just good for us. So we have baited him into playing c4. Now, this might still be the best move for white, the computer might believe that white has a better position but it's hard for him to prove it we have a very very solid setup and we're trying to induce weaknesses in the white position so i like the move rook fc8 but rook fc8 does leave the king side a little bit bare so maybe i want to play rook ac8 because these files are closed anyway Although I might want to try and play a5 in the future, and having a rook on a8 could be useful. If we do bring this rook over, we can always drop this bishop back if we need further defense, and then drop the knight back to e7. I don't think he can make any big threats on the king side, because we always have h6 to shore up the light squares. We also have good enough control of e5, so we can't really put a bishop there. This might be a little bit risky, but I don't believe he can create a big enough attack. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it. And maybe my plan is just to go bishop f8 and knight e7 anyway. Maybe transfer the knight to g6, open the rook up on the c file. Also open my bishop up if the knight moves. That could be a good plan. And have this bishop just as a long range sniper. But also helping out in the defense. A5. Interesting. Hmm. I didn't really consider that. Queen d8 looks most natural. Queen a7 looks way too passive. So queen d8... And c3 is still very weak. Again, if he goes c4, I'm happy. Because he's going to give himself an isolated pawn. And b4 is going to fall anyway. So he can't do that. But let's drop back. I mean, the queen only has these two squares to choose from. And I think d8 is better. 
So his plan is to put a knight on c5. Oh, and a5 stops b6. Okay. Makes sense. That's a good idea by our opponent. How do we exploit this? I don't know. Don't know. Now we could play knight a7 with a threat on c3. If this knight hops in, maybe we take it. And then put a knight on b5, supported by the bishop. I don't really like trading my dark squared bishop off though. Which is my only concern. Hmm. It's not the end of the world. Now, we don't even have to take the knight if it lands on c5, though. We can ignore it, although it will be hitting b7. So maybe we can't ignore it. But if the position's closed, then trading off our dark squared bishop might not be the worst thing. Although after a pawn takes, he will have the d6 square, which is annoying. White's definitely doing a good job here. Definitely coordinating his pieces very well. <clears throat> but okay. We're, we're, we're still fine. I think knight a7 makes a lot of sense. Trying to look at the b5 square. Because it is definitely a weakness that a5 created. Although you could argue that c5 is a bigger weakness which it probably is because it's further in our territory than b5 is in theirs and it's probably going to force us to take it although knight c5 we could play bishop c6 the knight could try and rotate like this though to get into b6 and we would have to get rid of it Now, trying to calculate. No, it doesn't work because he can just take, take, and then take b7. b7 is very hard to defend. We can only play bishop c6 to defend it, I believe. And then the problem is the bishop's tied down here, so bringing a knight to b5 isn't, isn't any good. So I think we need to take... Whoa, taken with the D pawn? That does not look right. That, look, that does not look correct. Because we have more control over E5 now, and I thought the open B file by taking with the B pawn would be a problem for us. That's interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. I'm tempted to go Knight B5 and try and induce this trade get a very strong bishop it's an option i'd love to play the move e5 obviously but he has three defenders on it and we have zero defenders on it so that's going to take a long time to accomplish i don't really want to be moving that slowly right now I'm actually going to try and trade the bishops because i think i prefer having a knight on b5 especially because it controls d6 which is a weakness in the position Granted, he has full control over this square, and maybe he took like this so he can put a knight on d4. Maybe that was the idea. But, I don't know. I feel like taking with the b-pawn was better to open up the b-file. He's playing very quickly though, which, you know, I have been prone to playing slowly in this, um, in this rating climb series. Um, bishop takes, like I say, knight takes, we're hitting c3, we have good pressure, we're also controlling c4, so c4 isn't playable. I think I'm happy with that position. If he ignores me, then I will probably just take and then put the knight on b5. I don't really see anything better to do. And then also, if we trade off the light squared bishop, we could potentially put a knight on e4 to further target c3. So that's nice. Maybe he should just drop the bishop back? 
but then maybe we can go bishop c4, knight b5. And a lot of the same problems still exist for white. Hmm. I'd say probably bishop c2 is good because he's got a lot of pawns on dark squares. So having the light squared bishop still on the board for him helps control some weak squares like e4. Because, like I say, if he trades bishops, my knight is going on e4. And then his dark squared pawns become potentially weak. Whereas if he keeps the bishop there, knight e4 isn't playable because he's just going to take me. Maybe we can find a way to make it work tactically, but that's the underlying idea. He's taking a good think, and it's a fairly critical position, so it's a good time for him to be thinking. Obviously, I'd love him to take, so we can get a knight on b5 and a knight on e4. That would be incredible. But, you know, he is more than likely not going to cooperate with me. By the way, if you are still watching at this point in the video, you're 16 minutes in. I hope you found it useful so far and continue to find it useful. And whether you're watching it for entertainment or like educational, because I try to lean more towards the educational side with like taking quite a while explaining things as I'm playing. Um, I hope it's useful for you in either of those ways. And if it is, I'd really appreciate if you show me some love in down below the video with a like or subscribe to help the channel okay this is an interesting move so i think his idea is that he's fine with trading off the bishops but he doesn't want me to put a knight on e4 i think that's his idea which is a good idea because this is a really difficult pin to deal with it's a very good move very good move and he could try and put a lot of pressure on this pin. Now, first I'm going to ask him if he wants to take. h6 is always a useful move. Kings are, gives our king some breathing room. Means that h7 is no longer vulnerable to anything. Means that a knight can never come to g5. Of course, he can just retreat and maintain the pin. And g5 looks pretty suicidal. <laughs> but yeah, we give him the option to take and he takes. But I feel like this helps us. Yes, it stops my knight from coming to e4, which I think was what he was trying to prevent. But now my queen targets c3. Okay, he does have knight d4, attacking the bishop. I feel like we should trade bishops. Hmm. We could drop our bishop back and then bring the knight to c6 or we could take and then play e5 which is one of we which is a move we wanted to play for a long time kick the knight out bring a rook to d8 or maybe e8 and this rook to d8 bring our knight to c6 or b5 and that looks very nice now i don't like e5 immediately because he can trade all the minor pieces and ruin our pawn structure. And a6 is going to come with a lot of venom at some point. Because he's going to force one of these pawns to become a passer. So I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that and give his queenside majority any help getting through. So... We could... Drop the bishop back to avoid any trades and then play e5. But he could play a move like queen e2 to prevent e5. And I don't think we're going to get this opportunity again. So we're going to take e5. Knight f3 fails to e4 with a fork. So e5, knight f5. I don't think e4 works because the queen takes d5, maintaining the defense. But the knight has to be shepherded by the queen there, which is good for us. Because then, although the knight is threatening to come to d6, so maybe e5, 
knight f5, knight b4 to control the d6 square. Again, queen takes here is not playable because the knight hangs. We're not going to get a better opportunity to play this move. And I think we need to play this move. And he goes back to e2. I suppose that defends the c3 pawn if our knight comes forward. But that looks so passive. So passive. Where's that knight going? g3? It also blocks the e-file for its rook. Rook d8 looks good. I would love to play rook e8 and rook d8, but if I go rook e8, then this queen's just going to take. And I have no good response. So rook d8. This can be met with d4. Or c4, knight c6, and if he takes, then knight b4 comes with a double attack. And we threaten c2 with a fork of the rooks. So I think c4 might fail. And like I said, we could just push. Could also push like this. Although then queen here. And then we give the knight a way out as well. We don't want to do that because his knight is trapping his rook in place at the moment. And not allowing the rook to participate in the game. The knight is way too defensive. I think although the knight was flimsy on f5, I think it was a better move. And he could always bring it back to g3, which is where this knight is probably headed anyway. But it just poses more problems for my position. So I think we're breaking out a bit now. I think we're breaking out. And I'm starting to like the position. <clears throat> we're far less cramped. And our pawns in the center are incredibly strong. This structure doesn't look amazing. And I think it would have been a whole lot better if this pawn was back on d4 and this pawn went on c5 because b7 is weak, right? It's a very weak pawn, but white can't exploit it. But if this pawn was over here, as in when um, I took on c5, if he had taken like this, which would have meant that this pawn was over there, then the b file would be open to try and attack my pawn. And he could potentially access the b6 square f4 f4 now i guess the point is if i advance then he gets to d4 square which is why i mentioned earlier that i did not want to advance but if i take if i take rook f1 g5 seems to fail to g3 because there's a pin on the pawn so take rook f1 what can we do there that might be a really nice move from our opponent because he's getting control of d4 which is what his pieces want Huh. Very nice move. Very, very nice. E4 might be the move. Because I think taking is just opens up too many lines. So we're going to advance. Yes, we're going to give him the D4 square, which I'm not thrilled about. And if we take, then knight takes and white is good. But this is not checkers. We can just move. I think f5 is a really good square. Because we not only control d5, but we keep the pressure on f4. Yes, knight g3 could come with a tempo. But we can just move. I think we can probably just take f4. Knight g3, queen f4, rook f1. Queen g5. White has no threats. Knight f5 with a threat on g7. Our queen already covers that and covers the e7 checking square. Looks a bit flimsy, but we're going to play a move like knight c6 or knight b5 to kick the queen out. And he goes for this line. 
I don't really want to take f4 though. We could just go queen g4. And the f4 pawn remains under attack. Taking in rook f1 looks dangerous. And whilst I would love to calculate this out, I don't have the time for it. So I think queen g4, whilst it might not be the best move, I think is the most practical option. Because we just throw the ball back in white's court. And we have a really strong position. You know, e4 is a protected past pawn. If we can get it to a square like e2, that could be good. It could become a weakness, though. So it might just be better to leave it as it is and use this central wedge to get our pieces moving around it with a move like knight b5 to target the pawn. The rook comes to e6. e3 is a blockader. Now we're going to... Now again, if I take on f4, this looks terrifying. So I don't want to do that. Do not want to do that. Um, we could go knight c6. And then go like this. But not a fan. Knight b5, c3 is well defended. And then where's the knight going? Don't know. So c6 may be better. Tricky position. Tricky. Okay, we're going to go to c6. I just... Knight b5 attacks c3, but c3 is well defended. Now we could take... And then rook f1. Don't know. B4? But it then takes, takes, takes. He's good. Could play the move f5. And then there. Now that I like. Weakens the king, but... Move like c4, we just advance. I really like that big fan. Now I want to put our king on a square like h8 or h7 just to step off this diagonal. But this looks promising. This really does. c4 is not playable because we advance or even take. b4 is not b5 even is not playable because we just take and a5 becomes incredibly weak. That's fine. We're just going to move our queen. Keep pressure on the knight though. Knight moves to defend the d4 square, which makes a lot of sense. I like queen f6, I think. But then knight d4. Hard to kick the knight out. So it's kind of like a now or never move. There. Take. Queen f6, rook d1, then rook d5, with this coming. I think this could be a good sacrifice. I'm going to do it. It just feels right. It feels like the right idea. Queen f6. He could get this check and then play this, but I don't believe in that. b5 hangs. This pawn's got ages to go. No way. No way that works. No chance. Queen's under attack. Rook's under attack. d5 is under attack. Rook is stuck. That's game over. And our opponent resigns. Very nice game. I'm very, very pleased with that game. And it was not easy. Our opponent put up a big fight. Got very low on time at the end. But I think d4... Maybe? I think it must have been winning. Let's get into the game analysis. Boys, I played that game at 91.4% accuracy. No blunders, no misses, no mistakes, free inaccuracies, the rest of the moves basically perfect. That is a nice feeling. And our opponent played at 87. 
So he played incredibly well as also, but he made a blunder and a mistake and a few inaccuracies. But let's get into the game. The opening, I'm not going to delve into massively. Just a very normal Karo Khan. Just to explain why I didn't like Bishop G4 here, I didn't want to see Queen B3. And again, my problem with this is that he can probably take my pawn structure is ruined. And... I, you know, I can play a move like queen c7 to defend b7, but if he can get a bishop to f4 successfully, my queen is going to be in a tough spot. So, I did not go for this. I went for knight c6, bishop f4, e6, knight f3, bishop e7. Like I say, I considered this move, but I felt it weakened my dart squares a bit too much, and white can maybe try and get a knight onto a square like c5 or e5 and i i don't like these positions without my dark squared bishop so i go bishop e7 white is better but how does he actually prove that there's no obvious path forward castle castle rookie one computer wants knight e4 takes takes give up a pawn then b6 and put the bishop on the long diagonal I think the computer just doesn't like my lack of space, so it's trying to throw a pawn away to get the bishop pair and then utilize the light squared bishop's dominance. But it's unnecessary. There's no need to do that. Whilst I am a bit cramped in this position, and objectively white is better because he's got so much space, white has to prove that. So I don't think he does that well. A6 is apparently bad. The computer is screaming for knight h5. And I did consider this in a few lines. But I didn't see what I did after the bishop just retreated. It wants f5. So get the knight out of the way, bring it back, and then put it on e4. Okay, it does give the e5 square away completely, though. So... Not the biggest fan, personally, of the idea. I thought a6 was practical, because a4 is an inaccuracy, but it's also the most like natural move to play. If white kind of just does other stuff, I want to go b5 and shove my knight onto c4. And if he trades, then I can get an open b file. And if he doesn't... And say he plays a move like b3. Well, apparently I'm just going to win the light squared bishop here. But let's just say I can't go to b2. I can always just drop the knight back to a square like d6. I don't know why the, the red things keep appearing, man. It's so annoying. But a move like knight d6. And I've got a lot of queenside space, right? You could argue that my pawns are more of a weakness than they are a strength. But at least I have a plan. I feel like my plan of queenside expansion is more obvious than white's plan because the most I can see is stick a piece on e5 and hope the trades favour you. My king is quite safe, you know, there's not an obvious kingside attack. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I think the position is quite nice to play for me. a4, queen b6, and I bait out the move b4, which is apparently the best move. I think I said when I played the move um, that, queen, that the pawn b4 might be the best. But it's not easy to actually play. Rook fc8. And it's interesting because I'm at such a positional disadvantage here. And a5 is a great move coupled with knight b3. But again, white has to prove it. Knight a7, knight c5, bishop takes. And here I really did not like this. Computer does prefer B takes, but not by a lot. It does not mind D takes, actually. It thinks it's... Well, obviously it's the second best move, because otherwise I'm up a knight. <laughs> um, but it doesn't mind it. I think it keeps the advantage. And Bishop B5 is really the only move to for white to be playing... Black to be playing, sorry, in this position. Because I need... Well, I would love this get my knight into the game and then start breaking apart white's pawn structure because a pawn structure i think um 
GM David Howell. I heard him say this recently on a stream. Um, a pawn structure is only as strong as its base. And c3 ain't that strong. And if c3 falls, b4 isn't looking that strong. And if b4 falls, then a5 and c5 are going to fall, right? Obviously, a move like queen c2 defends. Maybe I can go like knight e4, but then there's c4, so I can't take because the knight would hang. But you get my point. Like, theoretically, I can continue putting pressure on. And like I said, at least it gives me a plan. Because people really struggle with middle game plans, even at this level. It's a difficult skill to develop. I thought bishop g5 was a very practical idea. And h6, he just needs to retreat. That's all he needs to do. Maybe he didn't like g5. And bishop g3. And then we can trade. And then maybe I can throw a knight on e4. And whilst my king side looks overextended, it's difficult for white to actually take advantage of it. But what I was scared about was knight takes. Pawn takes, bishop takes. This pin is never, ever, ever going anywhere. The rook's going to swing over. The queen's going to swing over. This bishop could just drop back and maintain its attack. And my bishop is going to struggle to help with the defense. This is losing. And that's what I was worried about. So after bishop h4... It's a, it's a very tough position for me to play, right? Because how do I break the pin? I have no I have no dark squared bishop. I can't put a knight on d7 to defend the knight because my knight's all the way over here. It's going to take like three very awkward moves to get it on d7 to allow my queen to move. Because if I just move my queen, bishop takes, pawn takes, my king side structure's ruined, and I'm dead. So here I would have nothing better than sort of trading, putting a knight on c6, and kind of begging for my life, which is what I was planning on doing, <laughs> pretty much. I'm not losing, I don't think, but I'm certainly worse. But bishop takes f6. My knight was doing nothing. Like I said, I think he was just worried about ideas of g5 and knight e4. So he seemed to sort of panic and just take. I want to see how long he spent on that move. Yeah, he only spent like 10 seconds. Sorry, my game's really slow for some reason. It felt kind of panicky. And after queen takes, I've got a lot of pressure on this position. Knight d4. Takes, takes. And the computer wants knight c6 and believes this is drawing. E5 it isn't a fan of because of knight f5, which is what I said I thought white should do. Here I need to go knight b5 to control d6, in my opinion. Apparently knight e3 attacking here. And okay, I mean, it's very difficult to defend the d5 pawn, admittedly. I do have this trick, though. And okay, this is definitely favourable to white because this queenside majority is very scary looking and my e5 pawn looks like more of a weakness. But you have to see like a good five or so moves into the future for that. Knight e2 looks logical because knight f5 does look a bit flimsy but the tactics work in white's favour because he's just coming into d6, right? And I need to stop him. But he does need to see knight f5, knight f5, knight b5, and then, like, what was it, c4? Or, oh, sorry, knight e3. It, it's, it's not simple. It's not simple. And then you also have to consider moves like d4 there. And although the computer doesn't like it, again, it's hard to evaluate from a distance. Knight e2 is definitely not great, though. Rook d8 defends the pawn. f4 is the best move. I did not want to take here. I did not want to take because I was worried about rook f1. And I considered g5, which is the best move, but I didn't see what I do after g3. That was my issue. I fought g3 and this pawn's dropping and my kingside structure is ruined. The computer just wants knight c6. Knight c6, g takes. And d4? 
I'm never playing that in a million years. Never, never, never. That is not zeros. I don't care. I don't care what the computer says. <laughs> it might even be misevaluating the position because computers sometimes struggle to see long-term attacking chances. Am I saying I'm better than a computer? Obviously not. But from a practical standpoint, me with four minutes left on the clock? No way. No way am I going for this. F4, I thought E4 was far more practical. Computer thinks it's the best move as well. There's not really any other options. I either take or I go E4. Because otherwise he's going to take me. And then D5 is weak forever. So E4. Queen D4. And it lights Queen F5. Thought Queen G6 was a little better. I guess because this doesn't come with tempo. But Knight G3. Queen G4. Rook E3. And the game starts to swing in my favour now. Because Knight C6 is a good move. And it's a lot better than Knight B5. Because yeah... Oh, there's Queen E5. Well, I didn't even consider this, but that is a problem. Because if I attack the Queen, then I give up D5. And my only real way is to play like F6, Queen E7, take on F4? That looks horrible. I don't want to get into that. So Knight C6 I thought was more practical. Queen retreats. And D2 is the only square... Every other square loses. Well, he only actually has two squares. Problem with queen d1 is that I take on f4 and there is no rook f1 now. Because the queen blocks the entry. And obviously if queen f1, I'm just going to trade. Or take the rook. <laughs> but you get my point. Imagine I couldn't take the rook. I'd, I'd happily trade and just be up a pawn. Clear. With a protected passed pawn on e4. So queen d2. F5, I thought this was really nice. Computer wants me to take, but I was really scared of rook f1. Queen e5. I thought he could play rook f5 here. Apparently queen e6 and I'm good. But this position looks very scary. Although the computer is making a good point. Because my e4 pawn restricts a lot of white's movement, how does he actually do anything? But again, low time, looking at the position from a distance, I evaluated that f5 kept the game in my favour. Again, computer gives zeros. He does find h3, queen g6, knight e2. Knight e2 is forced, because otherwise I'm going to go d4 anyway. And d4 is the best move. Because the problem is... If I play a move like queen f6, knight d4, and the position is blocked forever, I will never find a way in. White has a perfect blockade, so I need to, even at the price of a pawn, break that blockade. Pawn takes. Queen f3, queen f6, sorry. I did consider rook d5, and if a move like queen a2, again I can just take, or play like rook d8, and secure my blockade. And look at these weak pawns. And this is kind of weak. But. I thought queen f6. I, I was low on time anyway. That's just what I'd calculated. So I thought I'd play it. And queen a2. I correctly. Observed was a bad move. Now what should white play here? White should play rook d1. Just holding on to the pawn. And it's not simple. Because I'm going to go rook d5. And if white shuffles, because it's kind of difficult for white to do anything useful, then I'm just going to double up. And this rook can't help with the defense of d4. I have all my pieces staring at d4. It's going to fall. And rook endgames look pretty winning for me. So let's say the king goes back to g1. And everything, well not everything gets traded because rook d4. Queen a2 check, king moves, takes takes, probably queen takes. I've got way too much pressure. But let's just imagine, for the sake of argument, that the queens come off the board. Let's just imagine. This is not necessarily winning. But this is a lot easier to play with black. Rook b3, rook c4. We stop the queenside majority. We try and get the king into the game. But we can trade at any point. 
So we could even step the king up first and then trade off. But the tactics again work in our favor because of the alignment of the queen and the rook. Queen a2 check has to be played. King moves. And then after the one set of rooks comes off the board, my position is way too dominant with the queen still on the board. King is compromised, rook is compromised, f4 is compromised, b4 is compromised. And remember, a pawn chain is only as strong as its base. b4 is not strong, and therefore c5 and a5 are also not strong. e4 is strong because f5 is strong. f5 isn't defended, but you can't attack it. You can try and play like queen e6, but then I win a rook. So, you know, probably don't do that. Anyway, because of that, I believed queen f6 was a winning move because I thought rook d1 and white can't defend himself. Apparently the computer finds a way after rook d1, rook d5, queen a2 pinning the rook to the king. Rook d8 fails to knight c3, playing on the pin. So queen f7 blocks the pin. And you've got to find some weird move. Queen e4? Rook d8. I mean, the moves for black play themselves. And then you've got to find ideas like g4. Again, breaking away the base of the pawn chain to attack e4. That's a tough move to make. Because you're just exposing your king side. And you're up a pawn, but I prefer my position. And I find it unlikely that white finds, you know, moves like queen c4. Like, what even is that? You're defending everything, but like, I don't know. It's odd. It's definitely odd. Anyway, he doesn't do that. He plays naturally with queen a2, king moves, and d5. The problem is he can't save the pawn anymore. Rook d1 I just take. And d5 just blunders, knight takes b4. The queen is under attack. The rook is under attack. d5 is under attack. And I've, I've restored material equality. The best move is rook b1, keeping an eye on the rook. Apparently, oh, <laughs> I have knight c2. I have knight c2. Forking the rooks, and the queen can't take, because queen takes a1. And I'm up in exchange, and I'm completely winning, because I'm about to take on d5. But my opponent understands knight takes b4, his position... I, I'm surprised he didn't play on, especially because I have 50 seconds. I can still mess this up. But it's so winning. It's so winning because everything is about to drop. And I still have this e4 pawn clamping the movement of this rook. My king is incredibly safe. His king, maybe it's safe on h2. But my knight's amazing. It could even come to d3 at some point to put pressure on like f4. Be completely untouchable, put pressure on c5. I don't blame my opponent for resigning. I'm very happy with that game. Whilst the opening was cramped, the Karo Khan maintains its reputation as being completely unbreakable. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.